I'm sure you've noticed that animals like octopuses, squids, and nautiluses are generally squishy creatures. So it might surprise you to hear that this group, the cephalopods, actually has a pretty good fossil record, with one major exception that for about 30 years was a scientific mystery. Most of the fossil record of these animals is made up of their very few hard parts. The hooks on their arms and their beak-like mouths are made of chitin, just like the exoskeleton of insects. And their shells, which can be internal or external, are either chitin or calcium carbonate, so they tend to fossilize pretty well. But there are also some ancient cephalopods with truly beautiful soft tissue preservation. The places where we find these remarkable fossils are Lagerstätte, sites of exceptional preservation, which are famous for the number and quality of their fossils. But in these fossil sites that seem to have it all, what isn't preserved can be just as intriguing as what is because we have found lots of the remains of extinct squid-like creatures called belemnites, as well as the soft tissues of ancient octopuses. But we have never found the fossil of any actual squids, and they should be there. The squid lineage is as old as the belemnites, and we do find fossilized hard parts from their closest relatives, and that means squids must have been around then too. So if squids were swimming around in the same oceans as their closest cousins, then where did all the squids go? No, seriously, where are all the fossil squids? Our story starts in 1986, when two paleontologists had a realization that would lead to a major shakeup of the family tree of cephalopods. Today, we often split the living cephalopods into two groups. There are the coleoids, which have soft bodies and either a very reduced internal shell or none at all. These include the octopuses, squids, and cuttlefish. And okay, time out. Yes, it's octopuses, not octopi because octopus is a Greek word, not Latin. And the preferred plural of squid is squids when you're talking about multiple species. Okay, now, what was I saying? Oh, in addition to the coleoids, there are also the nautiloids, which have a hard outer shell. The only living members of this group are the nautiluses. Now, throughout the 19th century, most fossil coleoids were assigned to the squid family based on the shape of their internal shell, which was thought to be exclusive to this group. But what those two paleontologists in the 80s realized was that many cephalopod fossils that had been assigned to the true squids didn't have the defining trait of squids. A squid is only a squid if it has eight arms and two tentacles. Yes, so I know what you're thinking. This means Squidward is not a true squid. And what's the difference between an arm and a tentacle, you ask? I had to ask too. It turns out arms tend to have suckers along the whole length, whereas tentacles only have them close to the end. So all of those fossils that were classified in the 1800s were moved out of the squid group and into a new group, the Vampiromorpha. This group was redefined to include the vampire squids, which are also not true squids, and octopuses, based on their shared anatomical features like having eight limbs. There is still some debate about this grouping, but what does seem to be the case is that not a single definitive cephalopod fossil with a squid-like set of limbs, that is, eight arms and two tentacles, has been found to date. What makes this even weirder is that we have fossils and even some soft tissue fossils of belemnites, the ancestors and relatives of squids. And data from molecular clock estimates suggest that true squids have been around since the late Jurassic period. So why aren't there any fossils of squids? It wasn't until 30 years after that reclassification in the 80s that we got an answer, and it didn't come from the fossil record. In 2017, a study investigated what happens to squids and octopuses after they die. This research came from the subfield of paleontology called taphonomy, which is a study of what happens after things die and how they become fossilized. Now, taphonomists often don't just study fossils, they also perform experiments, like trying to replicate the conditions of fossilization as closely as possible, or watching something decay in real time to see what happens and what it might end up looking like in the fossil record. And these kinds of experiments were key to solving the case of the missing squids. For this experiment, dead squids and octopuses were monitored as they decayed naturally in a lab, which sounds pretty unpleasant and extremely smelly. And how is that a job that people have? We actually looked into it and it turns out that the watching dead things decay job was given to graduate students because of course they were. In any case, the results shed some light on the mystery. The octopuses decayed the way the researchers expected them to. Their bodies stayed more or less intact, but the squids kind of fell apart. And by the end of two weeks, they were just piles of mush. And in addition to that, something fishy was going on with their pH. When we find the soft tissues of other cephalopods in the fossil record, they have generally been phosphatized. That means that during the fossilization process, their tissues have been preserved as calcium phosphate. And it's been calculated that in order for this type of fossilization to happen, the pH of the remains must fall below 6.38 on the pH scale, becoming acidic. And while the pH of the decomposing octopuses fell below that threshold, the squids remained well above it, which means that it would be impossible for them to fossilize. 
Mystery solved. Kinda. I still want to know why. What makes the pH of rotting squids different from that of rotting octopuses? Well, the researchers had an idea about that too, and it all comes down to lifestyle. Octopuses spend most of their time on the seafloor, while squids tend to swim around in the water column. This means that they have different buoyancy requirements. And if squids are more buoyant, then they don't have to spend as much energy keeping themselves afloat. And one adaptation that some squids have for this is retaining ammonia, which would usually be excreted as waste in other animals. This is because ammonia is a little lighter than water, so it gives them the buoyancy they need. But they need a lot of it. In fact, over 50 to 60% of a squid's body mass is ammonia fluid. But since octopuses generally live on the seafloor, they don't have this adaptation. And in addition to being lighter than water, ammonia also has another trait that makes it important in this story a high pH level, which makes it a base. In those decay experiments, the high concentration of ammonia actually prevented the pH of the specimens from falling below the threshold needed for fossilization. So if ancient squids had the same adaptation for buoyancy, that would explain why we just don't find fossil squids. Mystery solved, for real this time. And in solving this mystery, paleontologists might also have figured out why there aren't very many soft tissue fossils of another group of extinct cephalopods, the ammonites. Ammonites are more closely related to the coleoids than to the nautiloids, but they had an external shell, which we've found many fossils of. And the general lack of soft tissue fossils from this group suggested they might have had enough ammonia in their tissues to disrupt fossilization too. But then, paleontologists got really lucky. In January 2021, a fossil of the soft tissues of an ammonite without its shell was described. And the fossil showed us pretty much the animal's whole soft body, minus its arms, coiled up with many of its organs preserved. The researchers think that the absence of the shell could be due to this ammonite having been preyed upon by something. But whatever's trying to eat it dropped its prize after it got it out of its shell. This rare find gives us hope that somewhere out there, there's a soft-bodied squid fossil just waiting to be found. And I, for one, very much want to see it. For now, though, we're closing the case on the mystery of the missing squids, thanks to some very gross detective work. Have you ever wondered what makes words, well, words? Other Words, PBS's newest show about language and linguistics, has you covered. From determining the origins of language to whether or not computers can actually talk, Other Words dives into languages around the world to uncover fascinating, unexpected, and sometimes weird stories behind the human trait we all take for granted. Check it out on Storied, and be sure to let them know that Eon sent you. And there's no squidding around. <laughs> There's no squinting around when we say this month's eontologists are the best. Sean Dennis, Jake Hart, Annie and Eric Higgins, John Davison Ng, and Patrick Seifert. Become an eonite at patreon.com slash eons and you can get fun perks like submitting a joke for us to read. Like this one from Andrew. Okay, here we go. Why do tyrannosaurs hunt triceratopses? For the frill of it. Oh, that just, that hurts. And as always, thank you for joining me in the Constantine Haase studio. Subscribe at youtube.com slash eons for more fabulous fossils.